any of this. You don't believe that I went through this painting into a past life in New Orleans. You don't believe that I actually met a whole slew of people that look a lot like Alan, Olivia, Joshua. You don't even believe that what might have happened then could possibly be happening now. I never said I didn't believe you. Jack Robichaux was betrayed by his own wife, just like Josh is being betrayed by Olivia. Reva, all you know for sure is that Alan sent a bottle of perfume to Olivia. That hardly means they're having an affair. What about the gardenia? What about it? The gardenia was used as a private token of affection between General Hudson and Regina. And now Alan's sending Olivia a bottle of cologne called Wild Gardenia? That's not just a coincidence. Okay. I'll, I'll admit, it's intriguing. And what you imagine... I'm that... not imagining this. I was there. It was real. The mind is a very powerful and complex tool. Oh. And when we have serious questions about ourselves, even unconsciously, the imagination can be a way to sort it all out. Well, I'll agree with one thing. A lot needs to be sorted out. But this isn't just about someone having an affair and why. This is big. It's bigger than me. Something wants me to learn something from my past and my present. Th this is about who I was and who I am now, all at the same time. So I guess I'm lucky you didn't bring the straight jacket. It's in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Felicia, for listening and for not making me feel like I'm some kind of loon. The question is, what next? I go to New Orleans. You mean back into the past? No, I mean I fly to New Orleans tomorrow. To do what? Find out what happened to Jack Robichaux. And to me. Back to New Orleans. Great. Window seat. That's perfect. Thanks. I will. Just in time. For what? How would you like a travel companion? There's a conference in New Orleans on organic mood disorders, mm. and no, I'm not saying that I'm trying to keep an eye on you. <laughs> You're worried that I don't know my way around New Orleans, but I do. At least New Orleans during the Civil War. Still don't believe me, do you? I believe you think you were there. Spoken like a true therapist. Well, it's clear you need to see for yourself. Find out if there's some historical basis for what you experienced. And I think that's a valid pursuit. Maybe we could explore the connections and see what they mean to you. You're good. You got yourself a partner. And I have a good imagination. But not that good. I was there. Now all I have to do is find out why. Onward. <laughs> about this? Maybe you read something in the guide. Well, it would explain why all this seems so familiar. No, Felicia. I was here. I was a nurse in this house during the Civil War. I took care of Jack Robichaux, who looked exactly like Joshua. And Regina, his wife, who was the spinning image of Olivia, she was here too. Not to mention the beast of New Orleans, General Hudson, who was the dead ringer for Alan Spaulding. Regina was sleeping with General Hudson and deceiving Jack. And she was loyal only to herself. General Hudson was blackmailing Regina. 
said that he'd have Jack hanged unless they agreed to cut him in on his... on, on their plantation. Well, that's some story. Yeah, it is. I wonder how it all played out. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Daphne. What are you doing here? I'm sorry, I'm not. Oh, I guess I must look like someone you know. I'm... I'm not. <laughs> I, uh, I guess. <laughs> everybody looks like everybody these days. Well, I'm Danielle, the curator of the Robichaux house. And I also moonlight as the tour guide. So, like many of wealthy families in New Orleans, the Robichaux fell on very hard times after the war, especially after they lost the plantation. You know, it's, it's really amazing to me how everything is so intact. Oh, well, there used to be a large portrait of Madame Robichaud that hung right over there. Um, no one knows what became of that. Well, I'm sure it'll show up one of these days. Yeah. I'm not so much interested in the war as much as I am the families. Uh, families like the Robichauds. Well, sad to say theirs is a tragic tale. One that began and ended with the war. What do you mean? Well, it commenced when General Hudson occupied New Orleans and it ended with Colonel Robichaud's arrest. Arrest? For what? Espionage. What happened? Well, he faced a firing squad. Uh, General Hudson gave the order himself, and the colonel was executed as his wife looked on. So after the Union Army seized New Orleans, desperate times followed, and desperate people do desperate things. It's rumored that Madame Robichaud betrayed her husband. How? Well, who's to say? Um, what we do know is that she vanished after his execution. And we've seen some letters from friends implying that she was in England for some time. Uh, it's even rumored that she was an intimate of the Prince of Wales, who later became King Edward VII. Who knows? Do you have any idea what happened to the plantation? Well, it changed hands several times. Uh, now it's part of an oil field. Oil? Yes. The war was devastating. Some families recouped their losses when they struck oil, but 20 years later. But that didn't help the Robichaux. Oh, no. They, they, never, they never regained after they lost the land. Danielle, thank you. Thank you so oh, much. You've yeah. shed a lot of light on some things. I only wish that we could dig up a little more info on the Robichaux family. Well, I just might have what you're looking for. Um. The Robichaux family papers. Historians, it's, it's a dream for them. Would you like to see the centerpiece? Yeah. Okay, please. It's a letter from Jack Robichaud. Apparently to his wife. And check out the date. The eve of his execution. My dearest one. My soulmate. Death holds no terror for me, for I believe that the one who brought us together will never truly part us. If not in this life, then in the next, we will meet again. And until that happy hour, I thank you for your tender mercy and the gift, ever so brief, of your affection. I remain yours always, Jack. P.S. Do not grieve for me. Trust your heart. Reva, what's wrong? He didn't write this for his wife. That night, 
knowing that when the sun rose, he'd be facing a firing squad. Jack poured his heart out to me. To me, not to his wife. Really, you can't possibly believe that. I know that it requires a, a suspension of disbelief. Well, that's been established. But when I traveled back in time to this house, I was Jack Robichaux's nurse. And amazingly, Jack looked exactly like Josh. <laughs>